the French Revolution. The French Revolution started sometime in 1789 because the people, most people were uh, starving and could barely feed their families. A lot of people there were uh, in large debt and uh, a lot of people didn't have any money. Approximately 98% of the population was very, very poor. The society was split into three classes, or the three estates. Clergy? The top estate that consisted of the priest, the royal family, etc., etc. And then there were the nobility, the knights, and whatnot. And then there was all the poor people. Uh, or, and it's not just poor people in the third estate. There was also a tiny bit of uh, wealthy uh, people who were merchants, but mostly the third estate was poor people. And if the population had about had 130,000 members, the nobility had about 360,000 members, and the poor people had about 27 million members. Clergy and nobility in Paris were always living at the expense of the third estate. So, the third estate uh, weren't, uh, obviously weren't happy about this because all of the second, the second of the first estate acted like they were the kings and never got to do any work. They didn't have to do anything. They could just sit back, relax, and the third estate would provide money for them. The only way of partying, the only way of living was at the expense of the living of the poor. Third estate was delivering all the money. So you can see my point. And so the third estate wasn't really happy. So they decided that they could revolt. However, they didn't revolt just yet because France was still in economic ruin. The rich people uh, who were already living off the backs of the starving poor. What do you think the rich guys did? Increase taxes. Correct. I know. They put taxes on the already struggling poor. So, now the poor were really unhappy. And if sometimes the uh, fighting of taxes even escalated to violence and people were shot down and killed during these that did not uh, that's not a pitchfork let me try again yeah uh, this sometimes even escalated to violence and goons and muskets were brought with private tax collectors to hold off any uh, to hold off any poor people who were going to revolt or try and kill the tax mm -hmm. and then yeah even there natural disaster tore away their crops and harsh famine and winter meant that most of their harvest was going to be in vain. So, most of their harvest was going to be in vain. So now, the poor people are angry. So, they decided that they would ask the king for some reform. 
So, uh, so with the king desperate, he uh, decided to take a meeting. So the king was Louis the Sixteenth currently. Let's talk about the king's backstory for a little bit. After, hmm, after the king's grandfather, uh, Louis the Fifteenth, who also served as a king, well, uh, died from a pox virus that was spread largely around the world. However, was not named accordingly. What do you think that pox virus was? What was it? Tuberculosis. That's not even a pox. That's not smallpox. Yeah, smallpox. After Louis the Fifteenth died from smallpox, Louis the Sixteenth became the new king. He was promoted from Prince Louis Capet to Louis the Sixteenth. By the way, his father was not a king. He was a dauphin. Which is some fancy French word that I don't know the definition of yet. Anyways, so Louis the Sixteenth was now in danger because he was easily swayed, and his position was in danger from all the angry poor people. So he called a meeting with the state general. A state general. With basically a mix <coughs> of the three classes. So, he, Louis the Sixteenth, eventually decided he needed a voting system, voting system. Yep. for people to cast their votes. However, this voting system <laughs> wasn't exactly fair. How was it not fair? Well, Let's see. The clergy, let's see. Where's our pyramid? The clergy was 130,000 people. They got one vote. <laughs> the nobility was 360,000 people. You would imagine they had three votes, but yeah, they have one, one vote. vote. And this guy, the 98% of the population, one That's vote. Amazing. They have 100 votes. No, they have one vote. Yep. So, one vote, one vote, one vote. However, uh, no, they, a third estate was pretty unhappy with this new system because they found that the upper two estates would always outvote any uh, attempt at reform yes, in sir. the estates general. Yes, so, yes, so about 300 or 400,000 people. Yes, yeah, so. Uh, the upper two estates would always vote in favor if it, of imposing bad things on uh, the third estate, which is 27 million people. And when the third and the third estate would be opposed, but the two estates would outvote the uh, first third estate. And when the third estate tried to impose things on uh, the try to impose things on the first and second estate they found that they were the only one in favor and that there were the two people opposed so the clergy and nobility always outvoted any attempt at reform so they decided they do one better revolution so how did they do this well first since they were 98 percent of the population they obviously formed their own government. Next, they formed their own militia. Their new government was called the National Assembly. However, the king was kind of mad. So, what do you think the king did about this revolution? Yes? Wrong answer. He locked them out of their own building. Tennis court room. Uh, sort of? Not really. He locked them out of their own building. However, on, however, right down the road, they found another building that was indeed a tennis court. You got that part right. There was a tennis court that was fully unlocked and they could go inside and do whatever they want. And on June 20th, 
1789, these people uh, <coughs> demanded, these people took an oath that they would keep returning to this place uh, until the king gave in to their demands. And so, now the National Assembly was born. However, the National Assembly also included some a bit radical members. You know, in the sea of normalcy, there's got to be a little bit of radicality, okay? There's got to be a little bit of radicality. And that radicality came in the form of members of the National Assembly, like, uh, uh, what was it called? Yeah, Maximilian Robespierre. <laughs> what a name. And George Danton. Who are they? They were some l a little crazy members of the na National Assembly. And they went on to form their own part of uh, the uh, National Assembly. They called the Jacobin Club. Some members from the first and the second uh, state even joined their cause and knew what I just did. Anyways, uh, now the Jacobin Club was uh, even more radical. While the, moder uh, while the moderates in the National Assembly just wanted the king's power, they just wanted the king's power to be removed, these people didn't want the king's power removed. They wanted the king's head removed. They wanted the king killed. That's illegal, Bob, sir. Well, this is a revolution, and there's not really much the police can do to stop you from killing the king if there's a, a lot of you there. The police are not 98% of the population. I will throw a dart at your hand if you keep doing this. So, now, uh, these people wanted to kill the king. So, uh, so what? What is wrong with you? Anyways, what? You know, what did these people do right now? The National Assembly was still mostly in charge. So, the National Assembly decided that they would riot. These people just thought that Louis the Sixteenth couldn't see the problem. So, they started arming themselves up to bourgeois militia. They went to a military hospital and got their big guns. Then, they uh, went to uh, a symbol of evil, the Bastille, a large prison for the people who didn't comply with the uh, king. And Governor Delaunay, who was in charge, was uh, asked uh, was asked to get out and uh, hand over all the gunpowder. He was like, "Hell no!" And so they put a, uh, and so they chopped his head off, put it on a pike, and paraded to Versailles. Anyway, anyway, the king just couldn't see the problem. Uh, of course, he's a pikehead deity. That uh, and the he, the people were so endorsed with him that they were parading the pikehead deity around the city. Of course, right? <laughs> this is what you do. And anyways, uh, the people thought Louis the Sixteenth couldn't see the problem. So uh, he was a full twenty miles away from his subject. A crowd of seven thousand women. <laughs> Decided they parade to Versailles, <laughs> and, and millions of men uh, from the Dorda State joined on the way. Mm. 
then uh, they stormed the palace with a bit of the boy Melissa and they uh, fought against the uh, French uh, uh, and they fought against the French guard of uh, the king. They even some of the crowd even tried to kill the queen Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette uh, was uh, narrowly escaped and King Louis' uh, room was stormed. Uh, and so, King Louis had to get on the good side of the revolution. So, he had to uh, accept everything that the revolution uh, gave to him. All the rules that were imposed on him. And uh, those were rules that also were imposed weird things, not, uh, not really weird things, bad things on, you know, people like the clergy and nobility. Now, there was one certain Jean Paul Marat who decided that he what I decided that he would write a newspaper to make these people even more uh, angry. By the way, he was assassinated, but we get to that later. Uh, Jean Paul Marat. Did he, did he die? No, all uh, all of that was not even a point. He was confined. He had a skin t condition that kept him confined to a damn bathtub. A bathtub. <coughs> he had a skin condition. Oh, yeah, he was the one who was asking people to guillotine people. Uh, yeah, sort of. And but Road Beer was more crazy with the guillotine. Yeah, so. but he was the writer. Yeah, he was the writer of the uh, newspaper, The Friend of the People, uh, that made uh, the people, yeah, uh, ironically, uh, be more scared and angry. Not really the friend of the people, is he? And then he was assassinated by a certain Charlotte Corday. Corday. But we get to that later. Louis the Sixteenth was forced to uh, obey the revolution. However, uh, since his wife Marie Antoinette was an Austrian duchess, they uh, decided to dress up as uh, familiar looking servants and uh, uh, get away from France and ride to Austria. However, they were stopped near the, uh, they were stopped near the eastern border of uh, France where uh, uh, where somebody questioned them and said they looked familiar. Then, uh, then the passport was seen, and that uh, and you know, uh, it was the king's passport. So he was quick, quickly deported back to Paris. And now everybody knew his lack of support for the revolution. So, uh, uh, people started calling him a straight up traitor. Um, and remember, this is all only in Paris. People started calling him a traitor and started getting angry at uh, him. And now the Jacobin Club was furious. So one, one month after uh, the uh, Marie Antoinette and crew decided to skedaddle away to Austria, the Jacobin Club uh, decided George Danton, the mate, uh, performed a riot, uh, and this a riot was very exposing of the two sides of the revolution because the riot was becoming too destructive. The Jacobin Club was rioting. However, the um, the National Assembly of Moderates uh, sent in the National Guard to shoot down George Danton. Uh, this exposed a deep division between the two sides of the revolution. The moderates and the radicals. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you next time on the French Revolution. I'm to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.